Let's head off. Ugh. I don't know. Like, I feel like... I feel like Chiz is... Like, like I said before, like, the guest situation is Chiz. And at the same time, like, I feel like Kyle wants to talk about what he, he enjoys, which is fine. It's his podcast. He can do what he fucking wants. But, like, if you're going to bring guests and you're going to have, like, people like Chiz bring guests in, regardless of the repeat guests or not, you got to use who you bring in. Just imagine if Joe Rogan came in and brought, I don't know, who's somebody popular, Donald Trump. Just imagine if Joe Rogan got Donald Trump on his podcast. People look at look at their phone and go, damn, Joe Rogan got Donald Trump on there. And they click it. And then Joe Rogan sits there for an hour talking about like the the Tyson Fury fight and Trump is just not there, right? Trump's just like, you gonna talk to me about Corona? You gonna talk about the impeachment? You gonna talk to me about the hotels? Like, what are we gonna do, right? That's bad podcasting. That, that's completely bad podcasting. If Joe Rogan did that, people would be like, you, what are you fucking doing? But like, PK does it consistently over and over and over again. They don't use their guest, right? And you can go pro find situations where we didn't. I'm, I'm not trying to say I'm, I'm perfect about this, but, like, I've never made $100,000 a year off a podcast. And, like, I was never put in a role where I was making $100,000 a year on a podcast. Right? So, like, you got to hold yourself to a different standard when you're making real motherfucking money to it. Right? Most of my podcasts are just, you know, a bunch of boys hanging around. Like, I think we used to make, like, $200 a month off the podcast show or some shit. You know... So, that right there needs to be addressed, number one. That's number one. Number two, I've never really had a problem with the audio of PK. It's gotten better since when I, we started, but, like, I've always thought it was good enough. I mean, like, I don't think the audio by itself is going to, like, do leaps and bounds more business. Uh, I think the next step up with the audio is, like, adding music, um, adding set music, things like that. Or maybe even, like, doing the podcast with... Um, like a set like a like a set designer kind of like somebody that can pick what windows pop up and like whose camera we're gonna see that kind of deal like have a, everybody individually film themselves so, and send it to an editor but like that's a whole lot of motherfucking work but you make a hundred thousand dollars a year you can do that you should be at that level where like you know you have like if you if you go watch joe rogan clips you you see joe rogan talk about like the you know the the patterson film with the book with the bigfoot he shows that footage and he shows like footage of them surfing and then he shows like the guests talking about it things like that um would i agree that chiz i'm this is all secondhand information i'm given so if this is wrong i'm sorry in a few fact would i agree that chiz is not doing the best job i would agree that chiz is not doing the best job um he has he has four years of material to sell. Uh, he has millions of views he can sell, and he has a he has a he has a he has a lot of overhead. And they also can fucking pay. Part of that Patreon money was to help pay for fucking guests, right? Just fucking pay for guests. Like if somebody wants two thousand dollars, you give them two thousand dollars if they're going to get you more notoriety. Like for example, like if somebody like I don't know Joe Biden wanted to like promote his campaign on your podcast and you're like yo you could we got this many viewers we got this many eyes we have a young demographic market and plus we'll give you a thousand dollars to boot joe biden would be huge no matter what political stance that you get on right which they've gotten wax again i've gotten sage francis i've got um i went to try to get the navy seal guy even though he lied to us i went and tried to find a fucking navy seal guy um Right before I got kicked off, I was lining uh, Glenn Jacobs up to be on the podcast because he was, at the at that point he was hurt and he was out of the WWE and he was very he's a very political guy and I figured he'd be an interesting conversation to come in and talk about like the WWE stuff maybe do some shoot stories maybe talk some politics that kind of stuff. I mean like Boogie's an interesting conversation too. But the problem with Boogie he's an alpha talker and you got to over alpha talk him. Like if you let Boogie he'll control the entire line of conversation. It's not that he wants to, it's his defense mechanism from from him. Like he Boogie lives in this realm where he's the center of importance and that's pretty much the the sh the shell he's built around him. And if you go watch Boogie doing anything publicly, he's always the alpha talker. And as soon as it isn't about him, you got it's going to it's going to go downhill. So what you got to do is you got to keep the conversation about him 
but you got to keep it in a light that is more fun in an angle that's more fun for viewers, right? Like, I'd be like, Boogie, you know, me and you both had the surgery recently. And I've seen you have some really fine-ass women, right? Have you ever had sex in any odd places yet? You know, something along the lines of that. Could you picture Boogie banging like that fucking grave ghoul bitch in the back of his fucking Crown Victoria? <laughs> 